Number one asks us to select all quadrilaterals that have a 180 degree rotational symmetry. Um, a is talking about just a general trapezoid. And so no, you could have a trapezoid that did not have um, rotate that does not have rotational symmetry. Isosceles trapezoid as well does not have 180 degree rotational symmetry. A parallelogram would. Okay, so any parallelogram you drew, you could go 180 and it would bring this point to this point, this one to here, and so on. So parallelograms, yes, meaning rhombuses also, rectangles for sure, and also squares. So all of those, if a parallelogram has it, pretty much the rest of them are going to have the rotational symmetry as well of the 180 degrees. All right, number two, Lynn wrote a proof to show that the diagonal EG is a line of symmetry for this rhombus. Help her um, fill in the blanks to complete her proof. So because EFG is a rhombus, the distance from E to what is the same as the distance from E to what? So all the sides of a rhombus are the same. So E is the same distance from H as it is from F. So the distance from E to H is the same as the distance from E to F. Since E is the same distance from H as it is from F, that means that E must lie on the perpendicular bisector of segment HF. So if we thought about drawing a segment in here, E is on the perpendicular bisector of that segment. By the same reasoning, G must lie on the perpendicular bisector of HF as well. So G is the same distance from H and F. Therefore, um, line EG is the perpendicular bisector of FH. So if we were going to reflect um, rhombus EFGH across line EG, E, it would take E onto what? And G onto what? Because E and G are on the line of reflection. So if we reflect this over, E will go to E and G will go to G since they're on the line of reflection. And then if we reflect over EG, F is going to land on H and H is going to land on F since FH is the is perpendicular to the line of reflection and F and H are the same distance from that line of reflection just on opposite sides. So since the image of rhombus EFGH reflected across EG is the rhombus EHGF, it's the same rhombus, then line EG has to be the line of symmetry. Number three in quadrilateral ABCD, AD is parallel to BC. And Andre has written out a proof to show that ABCD is a parallelogram, so fill in the blanks to help complete the proof. So AD is parallel to BC is what they told us. So since AD is parallel to BC, alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. So we've got this diagonal, so we've got this parallel line, this transversal, and then this parallel line. So we're looking at an alternate interior angle here and here. So alternate interior angle DAC and alternate interior angle BCA are congruent. AC is congruent to itself. So AC is congruent to AC since the segments are congruent since segments are congruent to themselves. Along with the given information that AD is congruent to um, BC. So A they're telling us we were also told that AD is congruent to BC. Triangle ADC, so this triangle here. So ADC, if we look at what we have here, we've got this angle, we've got this side and this side. So ADC is congruent to CBA by side angle side, since we've got two sides in the included angle. Since the triangles are congruent, that means all pairs of angles are going to be congruent. So DCA, and let me get some of this stuff off of here so we can look. So we had 
this alternate interior angle with this one. We had this segment to itself, and then we were given these. So then we proved the two triangles are congruent. So now all pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. So DCA, this angle here, is congruent to what other one? So that's going to be congruent to this one, BAC. And then those are alternate interior angles. So if we look at this, we've got this angle, these two angles creating alternate interior angles for AB and DC. So AB must be parallel to BC. And then we were given that these sides were parallel. Now we just proved that these sides were parallel, which makes it a parallelogram. Number four, select the statement that must be true. Parallelograms have at least one right angle. That's not true. This is a parallelogram with no right angles. If a quadrilateral has opposite sides that are both congruent and parallel, so the opposite sides need to be congruent and they need to be parallel, then that has to be a parallelogram. That's definitely true. Because if you have both pairs of opposite sides parallel, that's the definition of parallelogram. So let's just look at the other two. Parallelograms have congruent diagonals. Not necessarily true. Okay, if we look at this one. Okay, there's a shorter one and that's longer. Those are not congruent. The height of a parallelogram is greater than the lengths of its sides. That's not true. So if we look at this parallelogram, the height would be here. Okay, and that's definitely shorter than the length of this side. Number five, EFGH is a parallelogram and angle HEF is a right angle. Select all statements that must be true. So if it's a parallelogram with a right angle, then it has to be a rectangle. That's true. Triangle HEF is congruent to triangle GFH. Now these two triangles are certainly congruent when we look at the picture, but they put them in the wrong order. So angle H here, so angle H in this first triangle does not go with angle G in this second triangle. So that's false because it's out of order. Um, this next one says triangle HEF, so we're doing that same triangle. So HEF is congruent to FGH. Um, and so that time they did go in the correct order. So those two are congruent. ED is congruent to, so this one is congruent to HD, is congruent to DG, is congruent to DF. And in a rectangle, this is true. Since the diagonals are congruent in a rectangle and they're bisected, all the little pieces are equal. And then finally, um, triangle EDH is congruent to triangle HDG, and that is false. So if you look at this final side, so in the last side that they put together, this side is not the same size as this side. So for sure, we've got a set of corresponding sides that aren't congruent. So we know that those two triangles are not congruent to each other. Number six, figure A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Um, is triangle A, B, D congruent to triangle C, B, D? Show or explain your reasoning. So we know that it's a parallelogram, and then we have this information that they've given us. So we'll want to use both sets. So if we didn't know this and we looked at it, um, we would really only have an angle with two sides, and the angle isn't between the sides. So we would conclude that there isn't necessarily enough information. Now, when they tell us that it's a parallelogram, that gives us some other information. So we know the opposite sides are congruent. So we've got this one already given to us. But then that also means that this one is congruent to this one. 
and then we have the side that they share. So that would mean that yes, they are congruent. Um, and you could do add in that AD is congruent to BC because they're opposite sides. And then, um, so the triangles are congruent by side, side, side. And certainly there are other ways to do this as well. You could have done an alternate interior angle here. And then you could have done side angle side or angle side angle. So there's multiple different ways that you could have come to that conclusion. Number seven, KLMN is a parallelogram. Prove that triangle KNL is congruent to triangle MLN. So now again, we've got um, a parallelogram here. So you can do kind of a few different things. So if you want to, you could do side, side, side by saying NM is equal to KL and NK is equal to ML because they are opposite sides of a parallelogram. Also, um, NL is equal to LN because it is the same segment. And then that gives you all three sets of sides. So then we'd have, therefore, triangle KNL is congruent to triangle MLN by side, 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 triangle congruence. So that's certainly one way you could do it by looking at this. And then that could also get in um, some alternate interior angles here. You'd know those two angles are congruent. You'd also know um, these two angles are congruent. So there's a bunch of different ways you could attack um, proving this one.